So went to Papalona and and actually I was training because I was watching a lot of video uh -huh. and see how people were smashing through the windows to get out of the way of the bull, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, and this was an accomplishment for me because I, I kept saying for like the last 10 years, I'm going to do it and mm -hmm. I never did it. And then finally, um, one year I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to train physically. And uh, the day before, uh, it runs for seven days in Papalona. And that Monday, I didn't want to run. I watched how it went. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was a side of humanity that was like, make you open your eyes. And Rex Ryan was actually there when he was. Was the, he running too? He actually got on the course to run. Oh. <laughs> and then right before, right before the bell went off, he got off. <laughs> wow. Right. Wow. So, um, so the second day I, I ran and I was right on Dead Man's Corner. And that's actually when the bull comes, you know, and they kind of, I don't know if you ever watched the video, but it turns right down to the mm -hmm. city and then to the stadium because it's about half a mile from mm -hmm. the stable to the stadium. Okay. And uh, I was right there on Dead Man's Corner and I'm telling you. See, something called Dead Man's Corner, something about <laughs> that. <isn't it? laughs> yeah, because, mm -hmm. you know, bulls can only run in a straight line at uh -huh. that speed and then when they turn, they kind of slide. So, mm -hmm. so I'm there. I position myself. You hear two things. You hear the first thing when they release the bulls and then, you know, you hear – the second thing, and you just hear the thunder. Everyone's jockeying for position. Then all of a sudden, they hear the thunder, and then people just freaked out. I don't want to run anymore. Now, the walls are like nine feet tall, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you can't really, you can't really like jump over the walls, mm -hmm. right? So we're running. I'm running. People grabbing people, pulling them down, covering themselves. I'm pushing people out the way. And, and I'm running, and the bulls come. And I'm running alongside of them. I didn't want to run in front of them, of course. I'm not a maniac. And then as they're as they're passing me by, I touch one for good luck. And I'm telling you, the moment I stopped, my heart was beating so fast. Dude, so I, I would have lost it. <laughs> so I would have lost fast. it. Oh my God. So, so, so I want to come back to that because I have questions. Okay. I have All questions. Right. I have All several right. questions. Right. But uh for those out there in Stickman land, you just hear her from my boy here at Havana Lounge. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta's his, number one kept secret. Uh, Atlanta's mm -hmm. number one kept secret. I'm here, Stickman number one, Reggie go. Kimball. You know the mm -hmm. drill. Puff step chat repeat. I'm mm -hmm. here with Ade and mm -hmm. D. Yes, absolutely. The proprietors of the Havana Lounge. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yes. So, and uh, for fellow brothers of the leaf, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you just heard D talking about the running of bulls, which is some crazy shit. But we're going to get back to that mm -hmm. in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, D, you were about to say something? Yeah. Um, there's uh, four business partners. So two of them can't be here. And I want to okay. respectfully just yeah, identify please. them. Um, so uh, Tyrone and E. We missing you, man. We're holding the stick down for you. We got a drink for you, man. We're going to hold down the podcast for you, man. But wish you were here. Nothing but love. Well, that just means we got to do it again, fellas. There oh, you yeah. go. We're going to go sure. ahead and claim it. We're going to do it again. Oh, yeah. There no you doubt. <laughs> so for, if you're just tuning in, you just heard Ade talking about his right. running with the Bulls. Have you done that as well, D? No, I haven't. I haven't done that. But um, I have a similar story in okay. uh, Milan, mm -hmm. where if you go into the Galleria, that's right next to the Domo, mm -hmm. and there is a bull on the ground, right? And when I first got to uh, Milan, I went to the uh, Galleria and I saw everyone just spinning. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm walking by and I see somebody just standing there and they're just spinning and then they'll walk away. They're spinning. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I walked up. I'm like, why is everyone spinning? So at the base on the floor, there is a bull. <laughs> and right where the balls are, there's like this dip. <laughs> from everybody spinning through the years. Balls of the bull you're talking the about. Balls of the bull. Yes. <laughs> okay. just not, I wanted to make sure I clarify balls. what balls we're talking bull. about. Balls <laughs> right. of the bull. Okay. So All it's right. on the ground. And so I'm asking, you know, um, the Italians what's going on. And they're telling me that if you spin on the balls of the bull, you're definitely going to come back to Milan. So that's why everybody was walking around spinning. So I spun and they had a cigar shop right there. So after I did my spin, went, got my cigar and chilled. So wow. very, very similar story. So man. That, that's that's something that you could say you spun. Absolutely. Hey, let's get it started. But that sounds like some stuff on my bucket list that mm -hmm. I might have to go check out. Now, I am going to say, Ade, I'm not going to 
uh, with the <laughs> running of the Bulls. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a former athlete. I played a lot of hoops in my life, mm-hmm. and I have two bad knees. I'd be done. <laughs> yeah, you I would be need, done, no, dude. No I would not knees, make man. it to. I wouldn't even make it past the first turn. I know I'd be through. <laughs> yeah, no bad knees. But I will say that if even if you don't run, it's an experience. It's a seven day event. Uh-huh. Concerts, people from all over the world. You know, you have, you know, people from Africa, people from Australia running it. You know, women, men. But you know, it it is a different type of mindset to actually mm-hmm. run it. But mm-hmm. also, you know, it's not for the faint of heart because, you know, uh, when that when you hear, you know, 3,000 pounds of a bull and you got six of them running down. Bearing on, down on you. Oh, yeah, bearing down on you on, on brick streets. And you just hear, it's like thunder. Wow. Some people just, just freak out. That's wow. Cool. Yeah. See, that's, a, but the fact that you did, that's a, was that like a lifelong kind of bucket list kind of thing? Yeah, that okay. is. Okay. All right. That is. It used to be on my bucket list, believe it or not. But then when I had my injuries, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted, yeah. Something about getting stabbed with a bullhorn that does not appeal to me. <laughs> that didn't feel well, you, good. You, trust me, you run fast when you need to. <laughs> but, you know, I got to imagine adrenaline is some crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Adrenaline's got to be through in. the roof. Just, just adrenaline. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you. After it was all done, the first thing I want to do, I found my friends. And smoked and, a cigar, probably. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> you had to light up, oh, I'm I sure. I, we sat in the bar, uh-huh. had a drink. He handed me a cigar because I told him. Because I even made a tape just in case I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I made did a, you make I, your piece? <laughs> I did make my piece just in case that morning, just in case I didn't make Because you never know, right? Yeah, you never yeah. know what God has plans for you. He had to tell D, I love you, man. <laughs> so glad that you're my brother. Get this to the right hand. Right? <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I'm telling you, just uh, sitting down with, you know, with my buddies uh, smoking the cigars and, you know, people coming up to us and saying, did you run and, and all that and just talking about the story and just really puffing and mm-hmm. just talking about it. And believe it or not, the cigar actually relaxed me. Really? Yeah, after running. It just kind of calmed me down. It put it, me in my place. People don't realize if you, you really get into this. I mean, the cigar is special, right? We mm-hmm. know it's about the people and the conversations, too. But this is almost like a a meditative kind mm-hmm. of thing that you can get into oh, when yeah. you really want to relax. It's how I like to wind up my mm-hmm. Friday evenings. You know, if I've had a long week, Friday night, I'm like, mm-hmm. yes. you know, decompress a little bit yeah. with a good cigar. Exactly. This yeah. is the, the, or they should call it a meditation stick, to tell you the truth. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's what they should call. That might be an opportunity for somebody. There you go. A business opportunity. Y'all ready? <laughs> Meditation. Yeah, let's do it. Go. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Yeah. So, how long you guys been into the uh, cigar lifestyle, man? Well, um, I've been into the cigar lifestyle. I have to say, fifteen plus years, just smoking it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I actually got into it after I I actually got into the whiskey lifestyle. So. Oh, so you did whiskeys first. I did whiskey first, yeah. And that's okay. No problem with that. Yeah, Yeah. actually, you know, I kind of got into, you know, the whole Johnny Walker and and all these other different whiskeys. And then as it went by, then cigars started to turn to connect with it. And Mm -hmm. the flavors started to be a lot better. And Mm -hmm. just the the ambiance and and the feeling and just like, you know, you want to relax with a nice drink. But Mm -hmm. also then, you know, I got offered a stick Mm -hmm. and I said, oh, wow, it's not bad. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. And you know, yeah. next thing you know. I'm and then you start one you start asking questions and start learning a little bit about the stick. But, most definitely. But yeah. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. Asking questions. Um getting involved as far as, you know, what is good, you know, what I like. Mm-hmm. Right. But also opening up my palate to other things as well. Okay. You know, so I've tried a lot of different sticks. Some mm-hmm. of them extremely spicy, mm-hmm. right? On their notes. And some of them are, you know, you're more of a medium body? Yeah, medium body. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. mild medium. Okay. So, yeah, I, I I really enjoy my stick. Like I said, it, it puts me, takes me to my place. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. It right. takes me to my place, especially at the end of the day or sometimes before I even start my day. Yeah, I'm about to say, you know what? Sometimes I like to do mine with coffee in the morning, man. There so you go. There nothing you like go. a good oh, mild yeah. stick with coffee in the morning. Oh, yeah. Especially when the weather's not as cold as it mm-hmm. is right now. Sit outside. If you have a deck, a back porch, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's the way to do it. D, mm-hmm. what about you, man? You been- For me, it's been uh, more celebratory, right? So all of those milestone events, mm-hmm. I'll pull out a stick or a stick is presented to me or gifted to me. And... um I haven't really had a chance um, 
except in the past two years to kind of get into it. But now owning a couple of um, bars, restaurants that actually support cigars, it, it forced me to kind of educate myself and kind of become more aware of uh, what's going on. So for me, it's been just a journey of whenever there's a major milestone, whether it's, um, you know, a promotion at work or, you know, a big event or a big trip, I'd break out a cigar, but then nephew, it would disappear. Niece. A nephew, niece. Mm -hmm. But now um, I'm really learning to appreciate it outside of those major milestones. So okay. That's okay. my journey. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a couple lounges. I didn't. So we're here at the Havana Lounge in Sandy Springs. Mm -hmm. Sounds like this is not your first rodeo. No, no, no. It's okay. not. We, um, uh, we have uh, business in uh, Blue Lagoon, Blue Blue Lagoon Bar and Bistro, which is in Buckhead. Okay. On that, and we actually have a cigar room in that establishment. I haven't made it to that. Uh, um, okay. And then something I've uh, got to do then. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've got a couple other surprises. There, there's a brewery um, that we have stock in in Chicago, um, and you know, but for us here in Atlanta, it's more so about creating that experience for people that look like us. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we're not done yet. We're just getting started. So okay. being here at Havana, it's a, it's a good start uh -huh. uh, to kind of give you our style and who we are and what okay. we hope to add to, you know, to the community. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful location, man. I just love the layout. Look like you got a pretty well stocked humidor right yes, behind we do. us. Oh yeah. So uh, for those in Sandy Springs, this is a great little hidden gem. May not be so hidden. Come on. Uh, yeah. After we're done with this, but uh, <laughs> you know, once we drop a little promotions on it, but man, yeah. I'm glad you guys had me out. So uh, uh, you got the lounge going. Mm -hmm. I've been checking out some of the vibe on IG. You got the grown and sexy thing going on. Definitely grown and sexy. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely grown and sexy. You know, so it seems like this is a place. Not only can you come and get a good smoke in. You, uh, I noticed you have a great menu yes. as well. Uh, so I'm imagine that probably attracts some of everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yeah. it definitely, yeah. it definitely, it definitely hits a lot of um, different palates. You know, it's, uh, you know, and it's a, it's a bit of a twist on because people come in here looking for Cuban food, right? But at the end of the day, well, we, well, with, with the name like with the name, Lounge, of course, kinda, yeah, of course. But you know, at the end of the day, Cuba is still in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so we want to create more of a of a Caribbean experience, but infused with Nigerian, you know, attributes. Okay. Right. And so that's how we run our, our menu. We're we're not doing the traditional, you know, Cuban sandwich and all that, but we're going beyond that. Mm -hmm. You know, we want the food to taste good, the smoke to be better, mm -hmm. and the drinks to be. So obviously, uh, you guys are of Nigerian heritage, then. Is yeah. what you're Nigerian telling. born. Nigerian born. Uh, yes, one hundred percent Nigerian. One hundred percent. Okay. And yeah. in our culture, it's all about the freshness of the food. We take a lot of pride in our food. Our food is very fresh. We use authentic ingredients, and we feel that you know if we put the love in the food, people are going to appreciate that. And so when they taste the spices. And we infuse it with American dishes, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be over the top. This is by no means a Nigerian restaurant. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very unique the way we uh, married some of our Nigerian culture to your American classics. Mm -hmm. An example of this would be we take your regular chicken wings and we dip them and roll them into an African sauce. And we plate it just like regular chicken wings. But I tell you, we can't keep it in. So... Those are the, that's a small example of how uh, we take an American classic. I need that kitchen to open yeah. up soon, man. <laughs> hey, I mean, y'all making me hungry sitting right here. I'm on this whole intermittent fasting diet, so I hadn't eaten yet today. So hey, don't, don't hurt me right it. now. Don't yeah. sleep on it, man. Let me tell you, <laughs> we can't keep it in. So oh, yeah, man. we have good stuff on our food. We take a lot of pride in it. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right. Like tell well, the whole place you take a lot of pride in. So mm -hmm. yeah. I can see that. Um, so. Family members and friends I always tell people, man, it's so hard to sometimes be in business with family members and friends. Have you guys just always been in business together? You know, let, it, let me start this one. Because okay. this is my big brother. Okay. okay. Older, See, older, I didn't older, See, older, older get brother. Hold okay. on. I'm not older that much brother. older. No. Okay. I'm not much like, older. Like way older? Or just <laughs> no, not? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Wait, hold, hold that thought right there. We're going to come right back. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to hold that That's thought. Because I want to know about... This whole dynamic with the brother. Now, <laughs> see what's going on here. We're gonna see what we're really talking about. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> One sec.
So tell me, D, about let's get back to where we were, man. Brothers in business together. Yeah. How's that going? I tell you, man, um, you hear that old cliche, don't do business with friends and family. Mm -hmm. And I can see why, you know, but I think what's unique is the relationship that I have with my friends and my brother. Mm -hmm. And we, the way we approach business, I mean, obviously we don't see eye to eye on everything, right? So you're going to have of that clash. Not. That's right. But the way we kind of resolve it is kind of unique because mm -hmm. the first thing, the, the very first thing out of our mouths when we talk about business is what's more important, mm -hmm. the business or the relationship? Mm -hmm. And everyone agreed it's more the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's more almost like a, you know, what, in a relationship when you have arguments, they have those keywords to kind of stop the argument. Mm -hmm. Going too far, right? You're now. going too far. Mm -hmm. That's our phrase. What's more important? And mm -hmm. it kind of brings us back. Now, granted, um, I defer to Big Brother um, a lot because he's he's very wise. But at the end of the day, we have similar vision, mm -hmm. and we've been successful in many different avenues, many different verticals. So this is just one, and we kind of believe in one another. Mm -hmm. And the two gentlemen that we have, Tyrone and E. Again, shout out to Ty and E. Mm -hmm. We're not Ty here. E. And then even with um, um, Kramer Avenue, who uh, the two young ladies who um, basically run our cigar mm -hmm. um, humidor, humidor um, we're all on the same page when it comes to business. And um, we, we kind of keep it like a relationship. Forget the business. What's the relationship? Okay. And we always remind ourselves. Okay. So that's the way we that's the way we kind of oh, yeah, keep you don't balance want business on it. to ruin a relationship. Because I've you seen can. too many businesses yeah. ruin friendships and. Really exactly. break families apart too. And exactly. You know, and I can tell that that's not going on here. And let me tell you, because I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. How, do you guys see each other every day? I'm assuming the answer is probably no. We talk to each other. Yeah, we talk to yeah, him every day. Exactly. We talk because you know he's he's at the other business, mm -hmm. and then you know when he can get here, and then mm -hmm. I'm here. So you know these two type of operations are taking up a lot of our time. But mm -hmm. so you kind of divide and conquer. Then. Yeah, divide and conquer, and and as long it's. Like we're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're all we're all trying to win. We're all trying to leave a level of legacies for mm -hmm. you know, as we like to call it in, in our culture, our harvest. The second our harvest, <laughs> man. Okay, yeah, our harvest. Know, our our children are our harvest because okay. basically, what you know, you plant them and then you feed them knowledge. You feed them, you know, a love of wisdom, and you watch them grow. And mm -hmm. it's almost like you're watching that that what you plant into the earth and watching it grow, mm -hmm. but also yeah. you leaving them something so that they can also plant the next harvest mm -hmm. and become bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like, you know, all of our partners are our brothers and our family. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so at the end of the day, we welcome in into our family as, as siblings mm -hmm. and we don't see it any other way. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, as my brother said, the biggest thing is, what is more important? What is more important? You got to okay. keep asking yourself. That. You, got, well, you got to. Well, you I'll can. tell you something. You know, um, I have two brothers and two sisters and love them all dearly. Mm -hmm. But one thing I noticed when DU arrived mm -hmm. and the I, I could just, man, mm -hmm. the, the, the embrace, mm -hmm. I could just see the love and respect that the two of you have mm -hmm. for each other. And that's special. And, yeah. and the fact that now you're doing business together yeah. as well, I think is even more uh, special. And and you got a safe word. <laughs> we got a safe phrase. You got a safe phrase. You got a safe phrase. You know to make sure the arguments keep because you're gonna have some disagreements, mm -hmm. man. Who's who does what? Like I mean, obviously you do the Blue Lagoon mm -hmm. mostly. I mean, but in terms of like just overall, do you guys like how do y'all divide and conquer in terms of responsibility so you're not stepping on each other's toes? Mm -hmm. you, you know the the responsibility I think is is. It's definitely shared. I think at the end of the day, we, we have, um, we're on the same path with the vision, mm -hmm. right? And so with that, there may be times where that, hey, I have to do this. But the whole thing about any type of business, every individual must know how to do every part of exactly. the business mm -hmm. so that, that we are interchangeable parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, and, you know, at the end of the day, we always hear this saying, this is a uh, old time saying, you are as strong as your weakest link, mm -hmm. right? And so every individual in this business is a strong link. Mm -hmm. And so therefore that link doesn't get broken. Yeah. Okay. That link can be interchangeable and then we can continue to strike. We, we have we have utility players. So okay. um, from the front end, Adi can run the front end, can jump in the kitchen, can do the books. Mm -hmm. 
I can do the same thing. The other two uh, managers can do the same thing. And we, we like it that way. Mm -hmm. So obviously we have roles and responsibility. Mm -hmm. But if Adi's out, the business doesn't suffer. That's right. If I'm out, the business doesn't suffer. And uh -huh. we do that intentionally. You guys have very similar personalities. I yeah. can tell. Yeah. But there's got to be some differences there. It's a, you know, it's, it's, yeah, the, the difference is okay. I'm more good looking, but <laughs> I knew well, you know, yeah. I knew he's been saying that since high school. But I'll tell you the truth, that's not somebody got to be the one. Big brother's always more good looking. You know oh, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You must be a big brother. Yeah, I'm too. a big. I'm the oldest in my family, so yeah. yeah. I, I tell you, you understand my plight. Hey, that's right. Coming from this side right now, I can feel it. You know, but you know what? It's all good though. You it's know, all good. you only look halfway decent because of him. You know what I'm Thank you. <laughs> you know, I have to do everything, you know, and, and you know, it's, um, you know, we're, we're two of 10, two of 10. Two of 10, wow. Yeah, we're two of 10. Now, is everyone here in Atlanta, back in Chicago? I know you guys said you're from Chicago. Yeah, from Chicago. It? No, everyone's not here in Atlanta. Okay. Um, we have, we still have a sister in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We have a brother in Nigeria. Um, we have a brother in, in California. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. believe it or not, the rest are here. Yeah, oh, we wow. started, okay. we migrated yeah, here. Everybody right. here. So okay, yeah. who made, the, who made the leap first? I, I went to Morehouse. And oh, okay. That's what oh, Morehouse, me in. man. Yeah. Okay. All and right. I never, I never left. I okay. Never you left. Left. Yeah. All right. You yeah. said it's all right down here. Y'all need to come on down. Yeah. It took, <laughs> it took years. It took years. But if what's well, cold as hell up there, man? Hey, I don't I, know. That was, that's enough to make me not want to go to Chicago. But you know, summertime. You know, it's, it's beautiful it's a in trade. the summer. It is beautiful. Probably in the, the most beautiful, it exciting is. place. Mm -hmm. You know, and and to me. So you went from one black mecca. To the, the to next, the next black yeah, black. Nigeria yeah. to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> but I took some detours along the way. Took some detours along the yeah. way. There you go. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Is it, so, is it safe to say with your businesses here that Atlanta's home now? Is that kind of like Atlanta? get this on film? I want to hear him say this. Uh oh. <laughs> Can I get a light? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Light this man up. Light him up. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to officially say this on the record. Atlanta is home, man. You know, about. it's good to be home. You can't take it back now, but it's on record. Prosperity is there now. <laughs> yes, definitely. So I'm not going anywhere. Because okay, I was hey. here I was here during the Olympics, and then I left, Okay, mm -hmm. you know, for opportunities. And well, then that's when I came back in, tell me, back in 96? Yeah. Way back. See, yeah. me too. Yeah, I came yeah. in 96, and I thought, when I first came here, I thought I was going to be here like a couple of years. It was a mm. corporate gig. And here I am, twenty something years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of grown on me, you know. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now, where are you from originally? I'm from Tampa, Florida, originally. Tampa. Yeah. Okay. So Tampa's right. home for me, like six and a half, seven hours south of here. That's not and, bad. And uh, I haven't been back in a while. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to go back because my mother's down there in Tampa. So you know, guys. But I've been trying to be right. cognizant and you know, okay. stay away yeah. mm -hmm. from yeah. the home, yeah. you know, yeah. for for obvious reasons right. in the climate that we're living in right mm -hmm. now with COVID yeah. and all that. Uh, and I'm sure you guys probably may. I found yourself in some similar situation yeah. where you don't want yeah. to be careful. not having the big family get togethers that you oh, used to have yeah, and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. We love Zoom. Uh, yeah, see, we love Zoom, man. Dude, we, I love Zoom and I'm about damn Zoomed out. I don't know yeah, about yeah, you. No, I'm with I'm, you. I'm about Zoomed <laughs> out, man. Every, 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 you get a text message, hey, we got a family Zoom call tonight. And I love seeing everybody. So y'all don't take this wrong if y'all watch the podcast. But sometimes we do Zoom too much. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I miss everybody. Yeah. I, I definitely understand what, that. What, you know, it's mm -hmm. that, it's that, uh, Physical touch. That's right. You know, it's that mm -hmm. physical touch, that yeah, hug, that kiss. You know, you know I'm gonna call me a mama's boy if you want, but I ain't mm -hmm. held my mama in a, in a long yeah, time. Yeah, hey, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's it's almost like your boys. It's like when when we get together mm -hmm. and you can sit down and you know, if your boys are from different states, you mm -hmm. want to get like you know, twenty of your boys together and y'all smoking cigars, drinking whiskey, mm -hmm. shoot, you know, shooting the crap. I don't know if I can say shit on there. No, but you can say whatever okay. the hell you want, man. Well, you know, you're shooting the shit. <laughs> so <laughs> right? this, this, this is like cable, man. We can go oh, okay. off. All right. Well, <laughs> damn. Okay, exactly. Exactly. Don't hold yeah, back. All right. You but, gave me the green light. Yeah, yeah, you gave yeah. me the green light. So it's, it's, you know, you meet, you miss that where that you can actually sit down there, you know, talk about each other. Smoke your cigars, have your drinks, and create that level of connection. And, you know, 2020 has been hard because we do a fellas trip. We go outside the country. We mm -hmm. go and, and, and have that level of connection with, you know, with our brothers. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's missed. Mm -hmm. It's missed. You know, you, you can do it with two or three, but our group is a lot larger. Yeah. And so when it's larger, you know, we also have to be aware of cognizance of our family at home. So we kind of mm -hmm. put all that 
ours right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. I'm a big golfer. I don't know if either one of you oh, guys yeah. are oh, yeah. a golfer. Yeah. 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 And some of the guys I hang with, man, we like to take an annual golf trip and we haven't mm-hmm. been able to really. Yeah, that's do been that. So that's that's been painful. Yeah. Although we still get out there and I try to kick their ass every now and then. Every now and then. Yeah, I play the, the, the local ladder ago. courses mm-hmm. <laughs> and take their money. Mm-hmm. Um, I know they're going to be go. watching too. So. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we may have to get you on the course. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey. Let's do it. Now, now, now. Don't, now don't, if you're like a scratch golfer or something like that, just we're going out there for fun because I don't want to. <laughs> No, we're not, know, we're not anywhere there. Okay. He's you guys like, going out there dropping 70s and 71s no, on me. I'm no, like, no, nah, no, that's no, okay. No. He's, he's triple bogey golf. Trust me. Who, okay. me? No, I'm not triple bogey. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Oh, I'm triple bogey sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I, I never I'll, have yeah. two good holes in a row. For some really? reason. I'll, I'll, if I do a par or birdie, I'll mm-hmm. follow up with like a double bogey or a triple bogey. I don't really? know what the hell that is. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. something I've never done a triple bogey. Well, see, that means you're already better than me then. I've never done a triple bogey. I've done a double. And I was one setting now. him up for the pool, man. You just oh, you, you he was, him. He was, I was, he him was doing I was like this. Yeah. I had him. He was trying, you didn't yeah. give me a signal. <laughs> he was trying to hustle me on, on TV, right? Yeah. I'd have I came back cool. on the podcast and said, man, they kicked my ass. <laughs> Never playing golf with them again. Yeah. Now I can learn something from you, brothers, if you if you guys are because I can tell you guys look relatively athletic, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah, try yeah. to do a little something. Y'all like put a little friendly wages when you get out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more shit talking. It's more, more yeah, shit talking. Yeah, because that, that, it, it lasts until the next fella's trip. So yeah. you yeah, don't want you get, somebody you know. calling you every, for 365 days just talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely don't want that. There's a dude mm-hmm. in our crew. Mm-hmm. Whenever we have our annual tournament, uh-huh. and he's won a few times. Oh, and we man. hate it when he wins because he, he's that guy <laughs> yeah. that when he wins, mm-hmm. we hear about it. Yeah, I mean, oh, he like puts out little videos and shit, like little oh. selfie videos. <laughs> oh, I like him already. Showing, him, showing himself <laughs> with the little trophy and stuff. You oh, know? you guys have a trophy Yeah, too? we have a trophy that we pass around. Oh, wow. I love crew. it. I so love you guys it. might yeah. have to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Actually, we do that. We do that um, with uh, Scrabble, Scrabble okay. family within okay. our family. Yeah, yeah. all right, okay. Yeah. So yeah, we have with the Scrabble yuppie players. who has his trophy, yeah. we coming for it uh, <laughs> this year. We coming for it. Oh man. Um, so what about uh, so back to Havana Lounge for a second? Every night it seems like kind of. Well, I can't say every night, but when I watch you guys on social media, it feels like there's always a little nice little events happening here. What's kind of the 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 vibe here on a Friday Saturday night. Do you guys always kind of have a set kind of thing you do on Friday nights Saturday nights? What's it like? You know, you know, um, Havana Lounge is evolving, mm. and and what I mean by that is we're we're putting our 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 niche onto it. So we want to have you know we want to have music, but what what we're creating is a space where that we have a, a older crowd. Mm-hmm. Right and and basic those mature that enjoys crowd. yeah mm-hmm. mature crowd yeah. that enjoys that enjoys sticks and mm-hmm. and the biggest thing is they don't want to go to a nightclub nothing wrong with a nightclub because I've been up in the nightclub day but you want to have a lounge we all had that phase mm-hmm. we went through <laughs> yeah but you want to have the you want to have this lounge where you can come in and and relax and good music good food good sticks and maybe to just you know just chill mm-hmm. find find this this. As I always like to call it this piece mm-hmm. where you can come in and we're like you can bring your wife, mm-hmm. you know, you can you can bring a group of friends mm-hmm. and you know you have live music or you having a nice DJ mm-hmm. and the vibe morphs into what it needs to be. That's that's the key, mm-hmm. and I think that's people our, make the vibe right. Exactly, exactly. that's the secret sauce, yeah. right? So uh, what's unique about Havana Lounge, depending upon the day, we can have. We can fly in musicians. Um, we can have the best DJs here locally. Um, we can have poetry reading. It really depends on what the crowd wants. Mm-hmm. And as we morph and as we make sure that we are listening to what our what our customers is asking for, we're trying new things. So we'll insert things like, you guys need to come during the summer because during the summer, we're going to have this whole parking lot, white tables, popping bottles, what musicians outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's going to be an in and outdoor thing. And by thing. then, I think COVID, hopefully, oh, knock yeah. on yeah. wood, will have kind of slowed hence, things down. But hence, that's why we're doing it outside because it's COVID friendly. That's right. E- even now, when, when you come in the door, we're taking your temperature, we're Perfect. wearing masks, we got gloves, you guys, oh, yeah. how we'll you guys manage that. sanitizers. We give you hand sanitizer, too. I love it. I we're love doing it. our part. Yeah. Um, but 
life still continues with COVID. Mm -hmm. And we have to find ways to make sure that we can live our I lives. I tell people it's got to be a healthy balance. Exactly. I respect COVID. Mm -hmm. I know it's real. I'm not one It is real. <laughs> it's extremely real. real. And we all have to be aware. Uh, but we can't just shut down forever. Mm -hmm. We can't. True, true. true. <laughs> So life continues. We got to be smart about it, right? So Just be smart. here at Havana Lounge, yeah. we take that in consideration and we make a safe, entertaining environment. Mm -hmm. But again, like Adi mentioned, we don't do any advertising. If you come to Havana Lounge, it's because somebody told you. Mm -hmm. So we're Atlanta's best kept, sec best kept secret. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe not after this. Uh, I was <laughs> do, you guys, do, you, do you guys have members here? Do you have a members? We, we do. Uh, yeah, locker, we do. Lock, we member do. lockers? Yeah, yeah okay. we do have member lockers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the... You know, our member lockers are um, Miguel Wilson. Shout out to Miguel. Ed Lover. Shout out to Ed. Uh, I just met and, him for the first time recently. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's constantly where people want to um, um, be members. So, okay. and, and the funny thing about it is, believe it or not, there's other members, which I will not name because, you know, out of respect for them. Of but course. like they don't want the name on the lockers, but they know their lockers. Mm -hmm. Of course. So it's they enjoy Mine's they the third one on the left. That's all they need to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. So they, they enjoy the vibe in here and, okay. and and they enjoy the level of um, um privacy. Okay. And mm -hmm. are you full on your members? As far as our lockers. Are they locker membership? No, we have no we have a few left. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a few we even have a house locker. Mm -hmm. And you know it'll say Chicago, so okay. you know you can knock on the locker door. We we won't let you in. But <laughs> <laughs> see, I thought me coming here to stick me and might have some special privileges or something like that. But you saying, hey, oh, no, no, we no. we yeah we you, you know what I'm gonna be quite honest. You always welcome. I appreciate you. You always welcome. No doubt. That. You definitely. Yeah. And we'll, well definitely I'm have here a stick support. one for you. I'm we'll here to support. Okay, cool. I'm here to support. Now, is there a house stick? Here as well. you, you know guys what? have kind of like your you know own what? Havana Lounge stick. And, and you know what? We have been looking at a couple to, to create a house stick. We haven't officially uh -huh. created one yet okay. or have one yet, but it's coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Right. So you're more of a medium guy. We talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, uh, D? Uh, you? Like I said, I'm just getting into it, so I'm more mild. Okay. And, um, you know, I like the ones where, um, you know, because the buzz for me when I smoke is, is, is real. Okay. The buzz is real for me. Uh -huh. So... I just um, I go with the mile. I make I make sure I drink my um, my scotch to kind of balance everything. And you know I'm 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 learning. I'm, I'm learning. Okay. About it, so what, I'm good. What, now we we say on Stickman puff sip chat mm -hmm. repeat right. Yeah. Yep. And uh, when we actually um, you know puffing you know gotta have something to sip on. And you don't have to be alcoholic all the time. Mm -hmm. But I prefer whiskey. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And especially single malts. I'm a big time single malt guy. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? What are you kind of um, lean towards? You know it. You know I'm be quite. Quite honestly, it depends on the day. But I, what I do drink often is uh, this right here. So we are actually, and I'll tell you, we are drinking Akashi Japanese whiskey, which is yes. fabulous, by the way. Yes, it's nice. It's, it's very smooth. Very mm -hmm. smooth. I've, very I've had relevant. Nikita before, but I have not had Akashi. But now you like I think Akashi is going to be on my bar, 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 bar pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's good. I mean, everyone that have had it has loved it. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think they bought it. So when they come in here, and this is new to Havana, so okay. we implemented this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely trying to bring different flavors, mm -hmm. not just the norm. You know, we're, we definitely want to make sure that, you know, the, um, black bourbon owners are represented here. And, okay. And, and Do you have some of them? We have Uncle Nearest, okay. and All we're right. working out. We're, we're talking to a couple others okay. to, to have on the show. I, I've had a couple of um, uh, recent podcasts with some of the local black uh, uh, whiskey and bourbon, so. Mm -hmm. You want some introductions, man. I, I'm yeah, sure love to be in here. Let's yeah. make it happen. Yeah, yeah, we make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so we puff. We puff. We sip. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we always like to chat, man. Okay. Who, who's the of the two of you? Who's kind of like when you guys get into conversations? Who's the who's the more spirited? It depends on the subject matter. It depends on the subject matter because you know there's there's there are things where I just sit and listen and I just wait for my opportunity. Because let me let me let me tell you about our group here. Mm -hmm. Our group of, of gentlemen is if you don't come correct, you you're gonna take body shots. Okay. And right. and what I mean by that is, with us, we talk about each other to make each other better not to bring each other down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's just like when we're together, we, we want to dress 
you know, a certain way because we represent a level of black excellence within ourselves. And so we want to constantly drive each other to do better, mm. you know, never to put each other down in any form or fashion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is is if you're if you're with your friends and, you know, they're going to they're going to be they're going to be true with you. Mm -hmm. Right. True friends be true with you. Then they're you never going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Even if you don't want to hear it. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it it. It should be that that motivation piece to say, okay, you know what, he's right. Mm -hmm. I need to do better because at the end of the day, they're coming with with good intentions, and we're yeah. all we all have good intentions. We all have good exactly. intentions. Hold that thought right there. We're gonna keep going on that. Um, no, so who's the shit talker in the crew, man? Oh man, oh, the shit talker, wow. man. Because I know in the, in the lounge, there's always a shit talker too. Maybe not between you two guys. Yeah, but I know e, shout out to E. E, where you at? Oh, yeah. he's a shit talker. The shit talker. Oh, he's a, he's okay. a shit talker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a shit talker. Ty is the quiet storm. Mm -hmm. Ty is like he's like that hurricane that just sits and you know he's not on the radar and he comes in real quick, destroys a lot of stuff and then gets out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how Ty leaves is. bodies behind yeah, him. Yeah, he's he's bodies walking out the door. People, you know, like, no <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, yeah, no so, doubt, man. So yeah, definitely. I think we're we're all shit talkers in our own right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But you know, it's at the end of the day, it just depends on what it is. Right? Mm -hmm. it depends on what yeah, it is. and what's what's unique about our crew is that. Some of the crew members I've gone to elementary school with. Mm -hmm. I mean, so these are not new intros to the circle. Yeah, this, this is, is like this people is high you know. school. This is you know we grew up together. So, so, so the, your other two partners, they actually are from Chicago yes. as well. Yes. Okay. This is Chicago vibe here. Oh wow, okay. definitely Chicago vibe. Chicago here. is in the ATL. Yeah, no yeah. Doubt. strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. By way of Nigeria, yes. By way of Nigeria. <laughs> By way, I can't forget now, they, are they are they Nigerian as well? Or? Well, they've been adopted by Nigerians, yeah, so yeah, they, 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 they think they are now, right? No, yeah, they got it. Most definitely. Okay, Nigerians. all right. They're family now. Yeah, they're, they're family. family. Okay. Much love to them. All right, mm -hmm. and and obviously we got a grown and sexy place. I can't wait to come back because I I was um, I was here a while ago. Mm -hmm. I was telling Ade that I was here actually previous to you guys, and but this I, I for something i just like about you guys that the vibe and the way things are yeah. going and i've just been kind of a casual observer so mm -hmm. i can't wait to come back and the audience that you have here um i'm assuming mostly mostly african Americans. you probably get a little bit of everybody though right oh yeah being yeah. here in sandy springs you probably yeah, got it's, some it's of a everybody. mix it's pretty a mix. pretty diverse audience i'm very assuming diverse. Here, right very very diverse and you know the funny thing about it is you know a lot of uh, patrons have come here prior to COVID, mm -hmm. and like, oh, hey, you, you know, like, you so glad they, you guys are here now. Right? Well, they, they like the spot because it's close to home. But mm -hmm. I think the other thing is, like, they'll say, hey, do you two have the same menu? Say, no, we have a different menu. And then when they try the food, they'll be like, oh, wow, this is amazing, mm -hmm. right? So we're not only are we exposing them to different food and different culture, mm -hmm. but you know, they they still the vibe is still the same, and and is as I said before, it's morphing into something a little bit better because at the end of the day, Cigar Lounge is about longevity. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to do the short, you know, short and burn out fast. We're, That's right. You know, there's a lot of lounges that you're competing with. But, yeah. you know, one thing I love about the, the Metro Atlanta cigar scene, though, mm -hmm. is that it's you're, you're in competition to a certain degree with each other. I can't talk today with each other, but it's a lot of love and support. Mm -hmm amongst the lounges as well. I can't oh, yeah. tell you how many times I bump into lounge owners mm -hmm. at other lounges. Oh, yeah. Like, what are yeah. you doing here? I'm just here to support the event, which oh, is yeah. cool as hell. Mm -hmm. In other industries, you just don't see that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and there's a, there's a good number of lounge owners that come in here and support us. And I'd like to give a shout out to all of them. There's a lot of them on the list. Mm -hmm. So each and every one of you, thank you. Mm -hmm. And as we will be going out to support them as well, mm -hmm. because I think that level of support within our own community helps us rise mm -hmm. and continue to grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you guys do anything else outside of just, obviously you have, I can't say just because what you've done is extremely impressive, but you have the Havana Lounge, you have Blue Lagoon, mm -hmm. um, is it Cafe and? Is that a brewery in Chicago. Brewery? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, are there other businesses? Because you guys seem, seem I, I got the feeling you guys probably got your hands in some other things as well. 
We got several different um, yeah. revenue verticals that we're in. Uh, real estate, we do a lot in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to make sure that um, we do our part within the community. So there's a lot of volunteerism that we do. Okay. So um, I was just president of the 100 Black Men, oh. if you're familiar with yes, that. Yes, I'm very familiar. Uh, North Atlanta chapter. Um, right. And uh, so we, we try to make sure that that part is seen, it is viewed as a job. So during Christmas, we fed the um, the hungry. We, I don't know we, how many families did we feed? Maybe about 50, 60. Yeah, so we did a toy drive, make sure that those kids, even during COVID, were, were as represented. So even though we're doing a lot, we got to give back. And we put that down as a vertical, as a job. Okay. It, it really is, you know, because if you skip that, um, you, you're missing the whole point of, of being successful. Yeah, you know, you got to yeah. you got to give it back. Yeah, it, yeah. We, it's not about just you and your immediate family. Mm -hmm. This is a community that we exactly. live in and we yeah. want to support that. community. Well, I'll tell you this, guys. Uh, count us in. If you ever want to help get the word out on anything, you ever want us to mm -hmm. post something on our social media, talk about it on our you on our um, podcast. Just let me know. I'm okay. here to support because I love what you're talking Thank about, you especially talking about 100 Black Men and giving back and 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 feeding people. Right, well, mm -hmm. our most basic necessity, yes, <laughs> is yes, substance, yes. right. So yes. I'm all about that. Just let me know yes, how sick up. men can help, and okay. we definitely put our people to work. Uh, uh, you know. I'm here as just mm -hmm. Reggie, but I actually have some people that support me. Okay. And between all of us, we got a small little yeah, there you army go. that we can get some things done. We got done. a village. There you go. <laughs> we can definitely get some things done. Yes, definitely. What, what's next for Havana Lounge? What can people expect, man? Where are we going with this thing? It's going to obviously say you fan on last thing. And I know <laughs> based on talking to you guys, I know it's here to stay. But what, what can people expect to see next? Yeah, from let me start that off. You want to go? I think what's next for... Um, Havana Lounge is to make sure that we're crossing our T's, dotting our I's, especially with COVID. We want to make sure that we, we get everything right and then we, ex we, we expand into some different opportunities. I mentioned earlier about when the weather breaks, we're going to have tables outside, we're going to have performers outside. We have a, a huge parking lot. We never charge uh, for parking and I think we've got, you know, three, four hundred parking spaces. So wow. we're going to utilize that to create some events that that's COVID safe, COVID friendly, um, but it's an experience. So mm -hmm. white tablecloths outside, we've got the candle lights, we've got a performer outside, and you're going to have the flow from from outside in the parking lot to coming inside. Mm -hmm. Those things sometimes get lost in um, just trying to make a buck in some of these establishments. They want to charge at the door. You can't sit. All money is not good money. That's and that's right. the way we raise. Yeah. We have to make sure that the experience is there. So mm -hmm. as we evolve, we want the customer experience to evolve and to get better. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what's next for Havana Lounge uh, for us is limitless. Limitless. There you go. Okay. I love that. Limitless. I, I tell you, my own personal vibe and take on mm -hmm. Cigar Lounge, I've been going to Cigar Lounge a long time. That's why I'm doing Stick Man. Is I want to feel like something you said resonated with me. I want to feel like when I show up at a lounge, like I've I'm at my buddy's, in my buddy's basement or yes. something. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I'm at a home away from home. That's yeah. kind of the vibe I want in Cigar Lounge. So mm -hmm. I understand now some lounges get their party on. And yeah. I'm not opposed to that. No, get not, my party I'm on, not, too. not opposed to that either. I like but I like party. to kind of come and chill mm -hmm. at times. Well, it sounds like you guys got a nice, healthy balance between both. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I think um, I think as, as, as life goes on, you know, we, we get into the whole work, 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 and then party, party hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's some people that wants that balance where that they, they work to a nice level and they party to a nice level so that you're not so tired. And you can actually do it on a consistent basis. That's right. Because if you party hard, you party two days and like, okay, I got to rest for four or five <laughs> days. I've been down that road where mm -hmm. I party hard, mm -hmm. you know, but this is, I've come to this point in my life where it's, you know, I want to, as I said before, mm -hmm. enjoy good stick. Be in, a, be in a good environment, be able to, you know, meet the patrons or make friends and, mm -hmm. and know them by name and be able to, like, you know, you know, chop it up with them. Okay. You know? All right. And to me, it's about creating that relationship. I want to be able to create a relationship with each and every patron that comes in here. Mm -hmm. You know? That's important. That's, that's definitely important. Okay. All right. I love that, man. Mm -hmm. I love that. So if you were to give people and just in general advice on just success and kind of 
you know, how you run your life and how you run your businesses, what would you say? What would I say? I say, you know what? Inhale, breathe and take the shot. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Can't be afraid. Right. Can't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And a lot of times we are afraid because we like that level of stability. Mm -hmm. How are we going to how are we going to pay our bills or mm -hmm. how we're our next meal? But if you don't take the chance, you can't go through life and say, you know, I wish I could have, should have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll right? be regretting yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if you're, my thing is, if you're young, do it. You, 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 at that, at that age, you have more, more ability to do it. And when mm -hmm. you're older, you do it still. All mm -hmm. you have to do is put certain things into place. Just in case, contingency plans, but do it. And if you do it, go all in. Mm -hmm. Don't don't have one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. And go and don't let in. setbacks deter you, right? No, exactly. Don't, don't, setbacks, don't, don't let the, that's, don't that's let the failures the don't let the failures because I definitely have started my share of businesses and I've fallen on my damn face and fucked them up royally. Excuse mm -hmm. my French. Oh, but yeah. is that French? There's that French. Right? <laughs> I heard somebody else say that. I heard, I heard somebody I else. I, I heard like, somebody else say, excuse my French. But yeah, it's not really French, is it? <laughs> no, you know, hey, in some places it is. Some places yeah, it might yeah, be. It might some be. Place. But I tell you, I want to add to that. Yes, please. Yeah. I will tell you, you know, being a business owner, what I see um, is that you got to do the right thing. Even if it hurts you do the right thing. Even if you're going to take a loss, do the right thing. And what I mean by that is if you have people, if you have creditors, pay them. Even if it hurts, you got to do the right thing because it all comes back. You're going to see them again. Mm -hmm. And um, well, heard those do what yes. you say, do what you say you're going to do. If, if, if I can give anybody some business advice and I can say that this advice will allow them to be successful, I will say do the right thing and do what you say you're going to do. If you're going to be there at 9 o'clock, be there at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Those are small things, but I'm telling you, in the business that we are in today, being a business owner, those are the things that stop people at the door. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, coupled with what Adi said, if you add those three ingredients to your to your playbook, mm -hmm. I think you're going to be successful. At the end of the day, man, it's about trust. People yeah. got to trust. People do exactly. business with people, right? And they want to know that you're a person that when exactly. you say you're going to deliver, you deliver. You deliver. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And if you can't deliver, you're mm -hmm. straight up about it. Yeah. And let's have, a, let's have a real, con let's have a real make, conversation. Make that that, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Be be comfortable with making those uncomfortable calls. There you, you know, go. You know, mm -hmm. where it's, you know what, I can't do it. And Shit happens sometimes. It mm -hmm. does. It does happen, yeah. But it shouldn't happen all the time. No. I'm going to call that yeah, one. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so, it shouldn't happen so, yeah. all the time. So word to the person <laughs> that's calling you every week something know, happens, like, right? Come on. Every week there's a new excuse. I what they said. They said for me to know. It shouldn't happen all the time because yeah. at the end of the day, if you put the amount of energy to make to get the results that you need, it will happen. Mm -hmm. But you have to you have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. the, you have to you know you have to put in that, you have to put in that sweat equity. Mm -hmm. That's right. That sweat equity is money in the bank, and it will come into dollars in due time. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you got to believe in the process. You got to believe in the plan. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you start to deviate from it. That is when your plan starts to go awry. Okay, exactly. You know, I love that, man. I love that. Well, I'll now, tell now, you, man. Listen, oh, I can't, ahead, I, can't no, I can't let you end this podcast. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm go without asking this Tampa Bay question, man. Uh oh, with this whole Brady thing, you kind of skipped over it when we talked about it. So I, I need to know what's what's really going on for my people out there in Tampa, Tampa. <laughs> Hey, so oh, okay, you, you I'm, a hard court, I'm a hardcore Buccaneer fan, so just so oh, you know, really? now, this, now, this, now, this year, you or, speaking or, my language. What this year? This uh -huh. year? Oh no! So my very, Tampa Bay started in 1976. Okay, mm -hmm. I was seven years old, dating myself, and guess who was at one of the first games? I think I was the second game of the season. Me and my father. There you go. There you go. There you there go. go. Yeah, season that. So, so a true, true Tampa Bay. Okay. Hey, true. I done suffered through all the bullshit losing years, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually one of the people that hated to see Jameis go. Mm -hmm. I, like, I wanted to support the brother. Mm -hmm. And I, because I still think he's talented as hell. Mm -hmm. And I still think his best days are ahead of him. And I feel like we might have gave up on it too soon. But Brady's the man, man. I, I, I was not a Brady mm -hmm. believer. Mm -hmm. Until I watched it this year. Until he came from New England to Tampa Bay. Yeah, and so I wasn't a believer. Yeah, and I'll be honest, because I thought maybe it was a system. Yeah. But what he's done with this team, and they follow him. I'm like, this dude's the real deal, man. I gotta man. give him his props. So man. you think y'all gonna win it this year? I don't know. <laughs> y'all gonna win. <laughs> that now, we shocked called... the world by beating the Saints because nobody thought it was gonna mm -hmm. be the Saints. Yeah. 
And Green Bay is by waiting. the time this podcast airs, I'm hoping we'll say that we're Super Bowl champions. <laughs> but uh, that might be Ooh, that, yeah. that might. But we got to go to we got to go to the frozen tundra mm-hmm. yeah. on Sunday. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What do you guys think, man? You think we can Anybody who beats Green Bay, I'm happy with being a Bears fan. Okay. So, oh, so yes, now, right. you guys are Bears you know, fans. Like, you got to be, right? They yeah. cheated us of doing that game, but I don't want to <laughs> talk about that. I don't want to talk about that, but I wish you guys luck, man. Go ahead and stick it to them. Yeah. We, we, well, we beat them once, but mm-hmm. that actually scares me that we beat yeah. them. And we beat them bad in the mm-hmm. regular season. We kind of blew them out. Mm-hmm. So I know Aaron Rodgers is like, he probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tampa Bay again. Let's do well, this. I just know it. Tampa <laughs> Tampa has a good defense. So it's, Devin White yeah. is a beast, man. Yeah. He, he, you, I'm sure you guys, did you guys watch the game? Um, yeah. Like, yeah. He's yeah. a beast, man. He's all, all over the place. Did I watch the game? <laughs> yeah, man. That's, so so, I'm, so, I'm, so I'm you're a big football fan. Oh, then. yeah. Yeah. Shoot, I might have to come here and watch the game. Yeah. You, you yeah. probably guys have the game on here Sunday mm-hmm. night. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Definitely have it here Sunday night. Definitely people's hooping and hollering and people falling out their chairs because they were rooting for the Saints. I had to give them water. They broke all their hearts. Broke their hearts. I had to, call, I had to <laughs> call 911 for a couple of them Saint uh, lovers. Sorry about hey, that, guys. Who that? <laughs> we that. There you go. There Tampa you go. Bay is that. Mm-hmm. That's what Tampa. I tell everybody. Yeah. Right also, now. we're going to have a whole bunch of Saint cars in the back. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get out. I'm like, okay. that's okay. I'll be like, that's he's okay. not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I, hey, I'm no. You talk about ladies, but I'm a huge Tampa Bay Buccaneers okay. fan. Yeah. I, I'm an Atlanta person now, and I consider Atlanta home. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna, I support everybody in Atlanta except for the Falcons because I'm such a hardcore Buccaneer Ooh. fan. I'm a, and that's what I'm a Bears fan. If the if the Bears are not playing, I'm watching the Falcons. Everybody but, that knows me knows I'm a Tampa, and yeah, they know I don't so. like the Falcons. Okay, I wouldn't say I don't like them. He's talking. I, yeah, I, I, talking. I, I'm liking. I'm liking the Falcons. I'm just a Bears fan first. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you know everybody in Atlanta, they're gonna be like, hey, "What? Now you're gonna have a whole bunch of flags out there." <laughs> we we can edit this, uh, Jasmine. If there's something you want. Know. Okay. <laughs> oh, you want me to lean in? <laughs> there you go. So now, nah, guys, this mm-hmm. I, I, I now I know I got to come back and talk mm-hmm. football with you guys. You like? Oh yeah. Like, you guys oh, we like talk trash. Too? You oh, like yeah. hoops? Too? Yeah. Does a dog bark? Okay, cool. Right, See, now nah, I'm a big Atlanta Hawks fan when mm-hmm. it comes to hoops. Big Atlanta Hawks. I'm a football. diehard Bulls fan. Bulls fan. Okay. Diehard, yeah, you, diehard of Bulls. Of course you were. Diehard I was Bulls. a big Michael Jordan fan. I, was so I can't fan. say I was a Bulls fan. I'm mm-hmm. a big Miami Heat fan when it comes to basketball. Okay. But uh, now, and I'm a LeBron fan now because yeah. I, I just respect what the brother does. But um, and Chicago is not bad. Yeah. I, can't, no, Chicago, I, can't, Chicago, I can't hate on Chicago. You know, yeah, Chicago. You no, know, Chicago is doing their thing. I mean, we're you know. The, I think the true Bull fans were Bulls fans before Jordan. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So when when we had the Reggie Artis Thiers, Gilmore, Artis Reggie Gilmore, Reggie Thiers back in the day, yeah, you know, Charles Oakley, mm-hmm. you know, and and Jordan is taking it to another level, and there's a level of expectation in Chicago. So hopefully we'll be able to get back there. But at the end of the day, I'm right on shout the out to D Rose. <laughs> oh man, mm-hmm. D Rose is the man. Yeah. I hate yeah. the fact that uh, he got hurt. That, what happened yeah. to him with the injury? Because he. Hasn't been the same. Although the last couple seasons, he seems to kind of yeah, made a little resurgence, which is yeah, good, happy yeah. for him. You know, yeah, he's in a good system that's working with with this mm-hmm. with his ability. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. all right. Well, I'm gonna come back, man. We're gonna talk some. We definitely want you to come so back, more, man. More, 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 more podcasts in the future. Yeah, let's definitely. make it happen. You know, let's we'll make it. Happen. The, we'll get the other back two guys on here. We'll make it happen. So, yeah. Reggie, we want to thank you. Mm-hmm. Amanda Lounge want to thank you and thank uh, Sick Man Blog, mm-hmm. and you know. You know, we just want to say thank you for having us on your podcast. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that, man. Havana Lounge got hit with Reggie <laughs> and Stickman, and we hit puff, sip, chat, repeat. I tell you, we've been hit, and I'll tell you this. Anytime you want to look at this podcast and see what's going on in the cigar community in Atlanta, this is the place to do it. Place to be. Hey, I tell you, we love it. Reggie, come back anytime. Dude, thank you, man. I, I couldn't ask for a better endorsement than that, guys. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. That's real special. Thank you for uh, having me here it. at your lounge. And thank you, man. It's all love, man. It's all, it's love, it's all man. love. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. You, thank you. Hey, stick thank men you. and mm-hmm. Havana Lounge. We're doing it. Hey, we're doing it. I, I love it. I love it. Sip, chat, repeat. That's what it's all about. That's man. what it's all about. <laughs> hey, everybody, come down Havana Lounge and Sandy Springs. Reggie Kimball, Stickman number one. I'm here with Ade and D. Mm-hmm. Come, Amanda Lounge. Come say hello to the mm-hmm. fellas, man. Mm-hmm. Amanda Lounge. 6010 uh, Sandy Springs Circle, Atlanta's best, best kept, kept secret. secret. We're open seven days a week. Make sure you come on out. The food is great. The sticks smoke well. The drinks pour strong. And you're going to have a good time. We're waiting on you. 
that's some good shit right there. Oh, yeah. yeah I like there that. There you go. Pitchman right there. there oh, you he go. broke out the MC on us real quick. I love that. <laughs> hey, everybody. Puff sip, chat, repeat. Stickman number one, I'm out. Peace.